Hello and welcome to the shop. I've got a project for you today that is really out of the ordinary, but I think it's going to be kind of fun and maybe even a little bit interesting. This is the rear wheel off of my lawnmower. Now when my kids cut the grass, what they like to do is they'll go down the row, then they'll push down on the handle, rotate the mower, lower it, and then go back down the opposite direction. What that does is put a lot of pressure on the tires as they pivot and the tires will be forced one way or the other. If you look inside of here, see how it's kind of real jagged right there? This is the piece that mounts in there, or was mounted in there. It's about a half inch wide. This is what holds this entire tire. The thickness of this is maybe an inch and a half, but this is what holds that entire tire on the, uh, on the axle, and this is all that's in contact. So all that pressure wobbling and wobbling ate away at this, and you can see it just, it just broke loose. But what I'm gonna do is I've got a piece of Delrin here. And I, I wish I could remember who sent this to me because I'd like to throw a shout out their way. But someone sent this to me and it's going to be awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the, the uh, width of this tire, this, this, uh, this inside piece here. And I'm going to cut off a piece that, that distance. I'm going to turn it down to fit in the outside, which is a larger diameter than the axle. And then I'll, I'll turn a tenon on it to fit all the way out to the front of the tire so I can slide that piece inside of the tire and I've got a bushing from front to back. I can use a fender washer in front and in back of this, bolt it right back up, and then you're not gonna have that, that pressure is not gonna be as hard on it because it's gonna have this entire probably inch and a half thickness of uh, Delrin that is going to uh, support the wheel. So now that was a real long explanation, maybe not a great explanation, but let's head over to the lathe. We'll start taking some measurements and we'll start getting this drilled out for the axle and turned down for the inside of the hub. The first thing we need to know is just how wide the hub of this wheel assembly is. I've got it sitting on my lathe and you can see the bed of the lathe directly below. And I've zeroed out my calipers. I'm just going to set this on here like this. And I'm going to extend the calipers down to they reach the bed of the lathe. We'll lock it. And you can see that we are 58.46. So we know now that we have a width of 58.46 millimeters. I'm not going to bother cutting that off just yet because I'll use this back piece to hold this steady in the lathe, but that'll let me how, know how far back I wanna turn my tenon. One thing I wanna point out is you know how there's kind of an indention on this side of the hub? If you flip the hub over, the back side of the hub is all the way to the edge of the wheel. That is the widest point. So setting it on the bed of the lathe and measuring from this lip should have given me the exact dimension that we need. I've got the Delrin mounted in my chuck. And as you can see, it's running fairly true. I'm happy with that. First step I wanna do is go ahead and true the end of the blank up. And then we'll start working on measuring back to the proper distance for the depth of that hub. And we'll start turning this down to the proper diameter. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this just a little longer than the distance that I need because it's so easy to shorten it, but it's really hard to lengthen the piece. So I'm just buying myself a little insurance right here. I wanna find the inner diameter of this hub so that I know what diameter to turn this blank down to. Once again, we'll just employ our calipers. And it looks like 28.11 millimeters. Using my calipers and a parting tool, I went ahead and turned a reference diameter on the back half of the blank. Now I know exactly how deep to cut and we'll go ahead and take the rest of this material off the blank so that we have the same diameter from end to end. This Delrin machines like a dream, <laughs> but man, you can't see back here, but behind my chuck, it's just full of ribbons. So I'm gonna have to stop periodically, clean it off as I work this down to the proper diameter. I ended up having to stop every other pass to clean the Delrin ribbons off of the lathe. I mean, they would just, as soon as you would get to the end of the blank, they would just wrap and I had to use a razor knife and cut them loose. So I stopped filming because that got rather monotonous. I measured the depth of this you can see that lip, see the lip down there? I measured from the outside edge of this rim to that lip and it was 33.07 millimeters. I put a mark on my tenon at 33.07 and I'm gonna drop it down into the wheel. And you can see we are right there. I mean, I'm within just maybe a millimeter or two of it being a perfect fit 
to that lip, uh, and it could even be some dirt inside of the wheel stopping it from fully, fully uh, seating. What I'm going to do now is pull this out of here. We're going to go ahead and measure from the edge of the lip to the outside edge of the rim, and then we'll turn a tenon on the outside of uh, of this blank, so we should be able to slide it all the way through to the outside edge. I've got my Delrin blank pushed into the back of the rim. You can see it at the bottom there. Um, it in fact does come up to the lip of this reduced section. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna measure, and I'll have to do this off camera because there's not enough distance between the camera and the rim to be able to do this uh, on camera, but I'm gonna measure how deep this lip is so I know how deep I wanna make my tenon, and then I'll measure the diameter of this opening here so that I know what diameter it should be. And we're gonna go ahead and get that turned down on the lathe so that we can uh, insert it fully into the rim. The distance to the Delrin was 23.30 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and get that marked on my blank. And what I'll do is I'm going to, it's the same exact process I used before, I'll get my parting tool and just to the right of this black mark, I will cut down to the proper diameter, this diameter, which I haven't measured yet, but we'll have in a second. And I'll cut to that diameter and then we'll turn the end of this off to that diameter and the bushing should fit perfectly inside of the rim. The diameter of this opening is a little tough to measure because it's so chewed up. I'm coming up with about 19.32 millimeters. What I'm gonna do is turn it down to about 19.4 uh, and then we're going to uh, continually test and sneak up on it. We'll, we'll turn a little bit off and then we'll test the, test the fit and, and just continue to do that two, three times until we have a good fit uh, inside of the rim. I need to pause for a second. You see that I just made this line. What I realized is this was the depth that this tenon sank into the rim before stopping. Um, I, that was actually on this side of the blank, so I didn't see this one. This is the actual depth of the outside um, part of the bushing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remark this. This won't hurt anything, but we'll, luckily we didn't cut, but we'll go ahead and remark this, and then we'll start turning it to the proper diameter. We've reached the proper diameter. I'm gonna go ahead now and just clean this part of the blank off. You can see what I mean about having to stop every few minutes and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off. I'll get this cleaned up. I'll finish turning this down and we'll come back and test the fit with the hub. You can see that I've got a pretty good fit. Now I had to do just a little bit of fine tuning. I had to take it down a little farther than I thought, um, but it actually fits really well. It does extend past the edge of the rim. Now you'll remember, I wanna use a fender washer here to, to uh, hold the wheel onto the bushing. So I need to take that down. We're gonna part that off just a little bit and get it level with the face of the rim. If you look at the back of the rim, you can see there's about an eighth of an inch gap there, which is perfect. That is the thickness of my parting tool. So when I part this off, um, I should be able to put a fender washer on the back as well and sandwich the wheel, the wheel uh, or sandwich this bushing between the front and the back of the wheel. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is part this off, get it to the proper, the proper length, and then I'm gonna come back, measure the diameter of my axle and get a hole drilled down the center of this. Uh, we'll test fit that on the axle of the lawnmower. Uh, once we've got that, we'll go ahead and part it off and uh, get this put back together and see how, see how the rear wheel works on my mower. I went to my mower's axle and remember only about a half of an inch of the tire actually made contact with the mower. So the rest of the distance of that rim uh, basically was just, just a cavity that dirt got into and, and just grass and, and moisture, whatever. So it was pretty nasty. So I cleaned it off and I measured it and I came out with 12.53 millimeters. Now, when I check my bits, the closest one I've got, and it's a tiny bit small, happens to be a 31 64th. So I'm gonna go ahead, I, I do have a bit that's a tiny bit larger than this, but I'd rather start off kind of small and test fit it, uh, and then we'll go back and uh, enlarge it if we need to. So I'm gonna get the Jacob's Chuck uh, on the lathe, and we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole right down the center of this blank. I'm ready to drill the axle hole into my blank. 
I'm going to use a starter bit to ensure that I get a nice straight start. I'm ready to drill the axle hole in my blank. There is no sense in drilling very far into this section because I'd like to keep this just in case I have to build one of these for the other side of the mower. So I'm going to go back to my calipers and we're just going to measure from this shoulder to the end of the blank and it looks like about 63.51 which isn't all that important. Now I'm going to mark this from the tip of the bit. Now you can see well, you may not be able to see too closely, but I'm going to mark it from the tip of the cutting edge. The bit kind of has a point that goes down like this, uh, but from the tip of the cutting edge back to here on the bit, we're going to drill this deep into the blank. That should take me right to the edge of this tenon. So when I part it off, I should have a good clean hole in the back of the tenon, but it shouldn't extend very far into this reserve piece. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put a little mineral oil on this. Uh, it's bogging a tiny bit because this, this material is a bit grabby and I'm worried about heat buildup. So I'm going to use a little mineral oil uh, and we'll finish this out. I'm going to speed the lathe up just a tiny bit too in hopes that that might help stop the bogging. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the lathe. We're going to take it to the axle of the mower and we're going to slide it on and make sure we have a nice fit. If we do, we'll come back and part this off. If we don't, we'll make an adjustment in the size hole we drilled down the middle. The hole I drilled in my bushing was a little bit tight. It didn't quite want to fit. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone and it was 12.35 millimeters was the size of that bit. I've got a 12 and a half millimeter bit, so 12.50. I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole out with this bit. And I think we're going to be in a lot better shape. I just bottomed out. So I'm just going to back out, clear the bit, and then we'll move forward and finish off uh, to the proper depth. 12.5 millimeters turned out to be the perfect diameter to fit the axle of the mower. I'm going to go ahead and get this bushing parted off and then we'll take the wheel and the bushing to the mower and get everything reinstalled and test it out. I'll clean this little lip up with a razor knife and we'll be ready to go. Let's take a look at how this bushing fits in the rim before we take it to the mower. We'll slide it into the back. We've got a nice flush fit. Be able to put a fender washer right up against that. We've also got a nice flush fit in the front. I think it's gonna work out really well. Take a look how easily the wheel spins. We'll start by installing a fender washer on the axle, followed by our bushing. And now our wheel. Got a fender washer for the end of the axle. That is gonna be perfect. I couldn't be happier with how that turned out. And while I was reinstalling the wheel on the axle, I learned that there was a second bushing. I missed it. It fell off when I took the wheel off, but there was a, another bushing on the back of that wheel that gave it contact so that it, it had contact at the front and back edge of the hub. Uh, they were both just a little less than a half inch wide. Um, but the beauty of this new bushing is I have contact along the entire surface of the wheel with the axle. So basically I have support from front to back. I'm super happy about that because we all know how it is when you push down on that mower and you turn, all that pressure is on those wheels and it's pushing them whichever way you're turning. That's not going to be an issue. It's going to give me much better stability. I'm looking forward to seeing how this works this summer as we cut the grass. I would really like to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this project. It was a little offbeat, something way different than what I usually do, but it was something that I had to do, so I thought I would share it with you. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Stay tuned. I've got some more great projects coming up really soon.